G'day, mate. 40 here. And if you sinners were looking out the window right now in Beverly Hills, West LA, like you sinners, you unspiritual types, those of you who don't have the gift of prophecy, those of you who are not vessels for God, right? Those of you who don't have the privilege of being on a mission from God, those of you who don't have a license to deliver the divine karma, those of you who are never given the gift, right, of, of the recipe for eternal salvation, all right? You sinners, you may well look out the window and you may well say, well, may they say, I see blue skies. I see palm trees dancing in a very light breeze. I see some gray clouds. The, the air, the air seems to be, you know, decent quality today, right? I see blue skies. Isn't that a, a Louis Armstrong song? I see blue skies. Oh, yeah. So you sinners, right? You, you sinners, you see skies of blue, all right? You sinners see clouds of white. You people with low levels of spiritual development, those of you who are not ascendant spiritual masters, you just look out your window and you think, oh, wow, what a bright, blessed day, right? You look out your window and you see trees of green. You see red roses too. You see them blue, bloom for me and you. And you think to yourself, what a wonderful world, right? The colors of the rainbow, that's what you see so pretty in the sky or also on the faces of people going by. You see friends shaking hands saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. Now, those of you who are on a very low spiritual level, all right, you hear babies cry and you watch them grow and you think they'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And you people on a very low spiritual level, yeah, you think to yourself, what a wonderful world, right? For those of us who are spiritually developed, right, those of us who are vessels for God, right, those of us who have a divine mission, those of us who have been granted the gift of, of prophecy, right, those of us who are able to see past the, the shadows dancing on the walls, all right, the blue skies, the trees of green, right, the, the red roses, uh, babies crying and laughing, children playing, Right? These are just shadows on the wall. Right? I see what's really happening out there. And you know what's really happening out there, mate? I see dead people. I see dead people. And you are too unspiritual to be able to see all the dead people. I see corpses. I see crematoria. I see gas chambers. I see concentration camps. I see mass genocide. I see turmoil. I see the great conflict between Gog and Magog. I see the forces of Satan doing battle with the forces of God. I see a great struggle between good and evil, right? I see civil war out there, but you're too unspiritual to see it, right? There's, there's practically a crematoria going up here in Beverly Hills, just like Auschwitz, right? Every day we are getting closer to crematoria setting up in Beverly Hills. Every day, what did they have in the, the Soviet Union? What were their very bad camps where you, you'd get sent, sent away to Siberia? And, and what did the Ukrainians suffer? Did they suffer some mass, mass starvation? Oh, yeah, I see. Mass starvation. I see people just getting lined up before ditches and <laughs> that's what I see, man. Just, just machine guns, just killing people, sending them into ditches, man. Because I am so spiritual, right? I am so far more advanced than you are that I see dead people, but <laughs> you. You who just live this primitive, unenlightened life, you see trees of green and skies of blue 
and you hear children laughing and playing and you think what a wonderful world but i see civil war i see mass genocide i see concentration camps i see starvation i see kristallnacht and auschwitz i see the holodomor in ukraine i see what the armenians suffered at the hands of the turks i see what first nation people suffered at the hands of europeans in australia and the united states and and canada that's what i see because i am deep right you are shallow you see you're so happy you're just fine with your trees of green you're just walking along singing a happy tune thinking what a wonderful world but i'm deeper than you i am wiser than you i am more important than you i am greater than you i am more righteous than you i am more profound than you i am more spiritually attuned than you i am more godly than you i am more critical to the well-being of humanity than you because i see dead people i see civil war could it happen here you ask well i tell you it's already happening here and how do i know that because we now have government telling business what to do did you know that the biden administration is passing onerous restrictions on car companies they are mandating the number of miles per gallon that car companies must meet on average for every car sold in the united states and you know what that means when government starts telling business what to do that means fascism that means fascism you know what it means when your local county health commissioner says in the middle of an influenza outbreak that you should wear a mask that means soviet style communism do you know what it means when in the middle of an epidemic uh, people are encouraged to work from home that's just like the cultural revolution in china so you may well say 40 could it happen here and i say to you child it already is it already is so fox news is going to settle with dominion fox news is going to pay 787 million dollars to dominion and i say good i say great they deserved it they lied and people died well i don't know if people died but they lied and they lied for ratings they lied not to get on the bad side of their audience hey after the election all right for about a day i entertained the possibility possibly even two days that voter fraud was the significant factor deciding the the rightfully elected donald trump versus that fraudulent joe biden then i read a book the myth of voter fraud came out in 2010 by professor lorraine miniti and i, I realized that, that we don't have a massive problem with voter fraud and so day in day out i said voter fraud did not decide this election i said the democrats were more sophisticated more successful at rewriting election laws so all the ways that they changed election laws to reduce the number of uh, mail-in ballots that would get rejected all right they did it all within the system they were more effective they had better lawyers they were more adept right they were more adapted they they were better at fundraising they got people like uh, Mark Zuckerberg on their side to massively uh, deliver money to Democratic areas to get out the vote, right? So they were just simply more successful. They worked the game, like the Tennessee Titans. Why did the Tennessee Titans win so many close games in the last two minutes, right? Because they stretched the rules, right? Their players, their defensive players, are instructed to lie on top of the opposing team's players, right not side of me nothing no funny business going on here but just to slow the other team down if the other team is trailing right to inhibit their ability to do uh, uh some kind of hurry up offense and then when the titans are on offense they have all these ways to trick the other team and get them to jump offside at uh, critical moments so the tennessee titans just push the rules just like the new england patriots often have uh more successfully all right than other teams they are more successful at pushing the boundaries of the rules and that's why they win games the democrats were more successful at rewriting election laws in 2020 than the republicans were and to the victor goes the spoils they played the game smarter right 
they played the game better, they w played the game more effectively, and as a result, they won. And the dumb team lost, and the smart team won. And I wish Donald Trump had been reelected. I wish the Republicans won. But I didn't stand here giving the audience what it wants. Now, it's a beautiful thing if you can give someone what they want. It's a beautiful thing to bring joy to people. It's a beautiful thing to bring pleasure to people. Right? It's a beautiful thing if you can deliver a corrective emotional experience. It's a wonderful thing if you can offer people salvation, if you can offer them insights, if you can give them hope and joy, help them to release unnecessary muscular tension and muscular constriction and interfering you know, patterns where people are holding themselves down and in and they're contorting and compressing themselves, where they have you know, all sorts of unnecessary and maladaptive reactions to stimuli and you can suggest to them, hey, why do you even need to react to that stimuli? Why not just pause, notice your habitual reactions, ask yourself in this circumstance, is this habitual circumstance, does this habitual reaction really serve me? Think it through and then decide whether or not you want to go through with your habitual reaction to life, right? If you keep doing the same things you've always been doing, you'll keep getting what you've always always gotten. So if someone can deliver to you a corrective experience like that, right, that's a wonderful thing. But I'm not going to sacrifice my dignity, right? I would stand up here day after day. Every single person in the chat frequently would disagree with me. My, my closest friends in this virtual world would, would disagree with me. And I would stand in here day after day, all right, saying what I believe to be true. I was not willing to compromise myself for ratings, right? Unlike uh, Fox News. Tucker Carlson tonight. In a minute, we're going to bring you the rest of our conversation with Elon Musk. We showed you some last night. Tonight, his views on the state of the American economy. That's a topic that many Americans are concerned about, and you can see why. As of tonight, inflation persists. The commercial real estate sector seems to be teetering. The U.S. dollar continues to lose its value. So key economic indicators are, as they say on the market shows, worrisome. But on a more fundamental level, there are also danger signs. When young people are told by their leaders that work is a scam and that stealing things from other people is a human right, how do you think your economy is going to look in 10 years? How about your civilization? The answer depends in part on just how much idleness and theft you put up with. Any society that cannot declare unequivocally and with confidence that stealing is wrong has no future. When you let the mob loot, you are doomed. This is why we used to shoot looters, not because we hated them, it wasn't personal, but in order to defend the foundation of all that we have, which is private property secured by law. Without that, we would be living in savagery and chaos. In Chicago, they already are. This is what America's second largest city looked like this weekend. There's no point to that. Nobody's benefiting. What you're seeing instead is civilization unraveling, unrestrained violence and destruction effectively unchallenged by government authorities, the mindless breaking of things, the rage of stupid children. If you let that continue, there will be nothing left standing. Most people don't need to be told that. It's so obvious, it's intuitive. Would you let your kids set fire to the living room? Probably not. But the new mayor of Chicago, who is an ideologue and a racist, understands that these stupid children are his militia. When they destroy what others built, he becomes more powerful. Their destruction has a political use, and so he refuses to criticize them. They're stealing because they're hungry, he told us, like these were the widows of Richmond during the bread riots. Watch his explanation. Is that the answer? To loot because it's a form of reparations? To loot because they, that's how they can eat? The real answer is 
how do we make sure the question is how do we make sure that people can eat look no one is going to condone um you know behavior that that quite frankly speaks to a level of desperation so you're not people you're not condoning not, looting I, i'm saying that people are acting out of desperation we don't want a society that is acting out of desperation but you have to pay attention to the cries that people have by so you're, ignoring you're not that, condoning looting th th there's no way to 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 embrace that what i'm saying is you can't condone the looting that corporations continue to do every single day when they take tax dollars from black, brown, white folks all over the city of Chicago so that they can turn a profit. <laughs> yes, they're trying to eat because <laughs> starvation is a pressing problem in Chicago, but it's not. Obesity is a pressing problem in Chicago. About a quarter of Chicago high school students are overweight. They join the overwhelming majority of their parents. Obesity is the problem. The shortage isn't of food. And as if to prove the point, the same mob the mayor just defended reportedly tried to break into the Art Institute of Chicago. There was no bread in that museum, only Chagall's and de Kooning's. So these were not people who were trying to feed themselves. These were people who were trying to destroy civilization, destroy a museum, a symbol of our evolution. We shouldn't lie about this. It's very obvious. And if you let it continue, you're done. But Chicago's leaders are lying about it for political reasons. This makes them more powerful. Destroying things that other people built that previous generations created makes this new generation of vandals who add nothing more powerful. That's the whole point. A state senator from Illinois called Robert Peters called the riots, quote, a mass protest against poverty and segregation. Right. Chicago's outgoing mayor, the destroyer, Lori Lightfoot, agreed. Watch. The vast majority of the young people came downtown, came downtown because it was a great um, weather and an opportunity to enjoy the city. That's absolutely entirely appropriate. Um, there are a few that came with different intentions, and they, they have and they will be dealt with. Um, but I'm not going to uh, use your language, which I think is um, wrong, uh, to say there's mayor. Right. So you can bet that none of these destroyers will be hunted down like animals, like the protesters on January 6th have been for over three years. Their lives won't be destroyed. Their families won't be hounded. They won't be banned from Airbnb. And yet, of course, what they did is far more destructive to our society than anything you saw in Washington in January of 2021. Their behavior is encouraged. So what happens if we, you encourage this kind of behavior, if you cheer the mob rather than restraining the mob? Well, ugly and totally inevitable things will happen. Productive people will flee, innocents will die, and ultimately you will get from this mob racial attacks. All of that is happening in Chicago right now. All of it. Watch this woman surrounded and beaten this weekend because of her skin color. So that footage was shared widely on social media. We didn't have to hunt it down. It came with the caption. You may have seen it. Yay, we get active. So this was racist mob violence. And we should not be surprised by that. This is what mobs do. The hive mind takes over. The lowest instincts take over. And people who are different get hurt, often killed. This is widely known and has been for a long time. Just last year, in fact, Joe Biden signed the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act that made what you just saw specifically a felony. And he signed that to much fanfare. And yet, and this is the key, no one at his Department of Justice is investigating that video or anything that happened in Chicago over the weekend because they support it. Democrats approve of racial violence. They are stoking it everywhere. No, it's not your imagination. They want race, hate, and violence today. Joe Biden released a statement about a young man called Ralph Yarl, a teenager, a black teenager who was shot after showing up to an elderly man's house in Kansas City. We don't know the details of this. There is much we don't know. 
And of course, we feel for anyone who was shot, including this teenager. But the White House didn't pause for a moment before drawing conclusions from this sad encounter and using those conclusions to further divide the country on the basis of race. The president said, and we're quoting, no parents should have to worry that their kid will be shot after ringing the wrong doorbell. Well, that's demonstrably true. But of course, the president is saying this in order to further divide the country along racial lines and to tell a story that is in fact not supported by the facts, which is that black teenagers are murdered by elderly white people just for showing up on their doorsteps. Ralph Yarrell, thank heaven, did not die from his injuries. He was just released from the hospital. But these kinds of mistakes do happen, and they're always sad, assuming this was a mistake. Again, we don't know all the details. This same weekend, a 20-year-old woman called Caitlin Gillis was shot and killed after her friend turned into the wrong driveway in upstate New York. A man shot her dead in the passenger seat. But there was no statement from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris about this, of course, because Caitlin Gillis was white, and therefore her death could not be used to further incite racial conflict that benefits the Democratic Party. Now, if you think that we're not giving our leaders enough credit, if you're wondering, could they really be that cynical and destructive? Unfortunately, they not only could be, but they are. And the effects, of course, are destructive, always and everywhere. Over the weekend in Compton, California, needless to say a Democratic Party stronghold, it's not hard to imagine a future in which there are no more gas stations. Because in California, mobs apparently can just walk into a store, including a gas station, and destroy the place, smash the windows, and take what they want. We know that because it happened on Sunday in Compton. Now, this mob was not starving. No, they didn't steal food. They stole beer, condoms, and cigarettes. <laughs> Oh, it looks third world, you hear people say. But that's not accurate. Very few third world countries would put up with that for a minute. El Salvador is far safer than Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, criminals control the stores and the streets because there aren't enough police to respond. And of course, they know that perfectly well. And that's why the people who looted that store then did burnouts in the street while the store was being looted. Watch this. That's a public street. That's not a parking lot in a rural area. That's Los Angeles. You can't live in a country like that. No normal person can live in a chaotic, dangerous country like that. And so the normal productive people will leave. They absolutely will leave. And not just Los Angeles, not just Chicago, all over the country in the cities controlled by the Democratic Party. In New York, a man with 11 prior arrests just bludgeoned a female police officer with a bottle in the middle of the day. You're seeing the attack on your screen right now. And the sad news is a lot of these attacks, and you see them online if you pay attention, are racial. And that's the last thing you want. You definitely don't want people hurting each other because they're of different races, not in a country like this. Not in any country, but especially not here. This is not what we were promised, and yet it's what we're getting. As if to underscore that point, the rioting this weekend in Chicago began in a place called Millennium Park. If that sounds familiar and you're not from the city, that's because Millennium Park, Grant Park is part of it, is the same place where Barack Obama gave his famous 2008 victory speech in which he promised a better future. Listen. It's been a long time coming, but tonight, because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. Change has come to America. Barack Obama was more prophetic than we knew. That was just 15 years ago. But today we're seeing the change that Barack Obama brought to America. This is what it looks like.
Heather McDonald is the author of When Race Trumps Merit, How the Pursuit of Equity Sacrifices Excellence, Destroys Beauty, and Threatens Lives. That book is out today. Heather McDonald, congratulations on that book, and bless you for pointing out that it destroys beauty, which some people still care about. Thank heaven. So it does seem like these outbreaks of lawlessness and mob rule are the easiest kinds of crimes to stop. Well, that would depend on being believing in the police authority, and the elites have done everything they can possibly do to discredit legitimate police authority by calling it racist. We are seeing civilization break down in front of our eyes. It's a willed and voluntary breakdown, and it will continue and worsen until we stand up against the phony charge of racism, whether directed at the police, at medicine, or the arts, and start defending America's civilizational inheritance. I, I love this idea that what we're, we're seeing is the product of starvation or deprivation or poverty. These mobs are all organized on social media. The participants all have smartphones. That's not my idea of starvation or deprivation. What's, I, you wonder, though, I mean, if you're the opposite, the so-called opposition party, which, of course, most of the time colludes with the Democratic Party. But if you're an ambitious Republican, like running on making the country safe and clean and getting the junkies out of the parks and the marauding teenagers out of 7-Eleven, like, that's not hard. Why does nobody do that? Is everybody so intimidated that no one will just say that obvious truth? Yes, they're absolutely intimidated because the left will say they're playing the race card. It's very odd because the left says there's no racial disparities in crime, and yet if somebody talks about crime, they'll be accused, sotto voce, of being racist. So the left actually knows something that it's not letting on. The fact is, is that law enforcement is not racist for having a disparate impact on black criminals. It has a disparate impact on black criminals when it's enforced in a colorblind manner because the black crime rate is so high. Who suffers from that black crime rate overwhelmingly? black victims. And yet we're not allowed to talk about those black victims because doing so means talking about black crime. And America turns its eyes away from the pathological inner city culture that gives us these mobs, that gives us these barbaric drive-by shootings. 